Um, so, hello. Uh, excuse me, it's time to start. It's strange, the class is not full here. Um, so I, I just wanted to start off by, so ideally this slide was supposed to be the last one, uh, but seeing as people normally you know, leave earlier than, well, we normally go over time, I suppose. Um, I, I figured I might as well put it you know, as the first one, but uh, before uploading it, I'll probably move it down. I guess you want to look at it again. Uh, just to remind ourselves that today is the last day. Well, this is where I get off. This is my last stop. Um, yeah, but uh, it's block number three is done, right? Uh, but for those of you who uh, normally do your laboratory sessions from Scilab A and B, uh, you're stuck with me at least up to tomorrow, I think. Uh, so yeah, but just to remind us that um, in terms of assessments, you know, there's, there's a third test coming along on the 11th, I believe. Um, so part three is going to cover everything we've done from testing all the way up to what we're going to do today. So uh, nested collections, right? Um, and then the exam, obviously, uh, quite naturally, is going to cover everything we've done so far, right? So functions all the way up to nested collections. This is just for part three, right? Uh, remember that uh, Dr. Derenzi's, um, Dr. Derenzi's portion is probably going to be included in test number three as well, right? Test three, okay? Uh, in, in, case, in case you haven't had the, 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 the chance or the time to see Monty, Monty Python, please just find time and, and do this. It's kind of interesting. Um, I, I, was, I was watching a Big Thing video not so long ago, and apparently they uploaded everything on YouTube, so you know you can access it there. It's HD, right? Um, yes. Uh, well, are there any questions, by the way? Uh, stop. Uh, so this is the thing, right? Stop, stop uh, minus one. Right? Stop is the least, right? Perhaps it's string. We don't know. Are there any questions with regards to you know, the assessment and everything we've done so far? Nothing. OK, fine. Uh, so here's the, uh, I was looking, aha. Uh -huh. Sorry, your name? Sorry, your name? Yeah. Alex. No, 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 I know your first name. Sorry. Sorry? Kniemeyer. Uh, yeah, so Alex Kniemeyer, right? Um, he, he, he came up, uh, uh, thank you very much. He came up last, uh, last week on, on, on Thursday. Um, and there's, there's a lady, she's not here. Uh, there was a lady who, who, who was trying to find out what the, I mean, what, what, what was so important or what, what was so peculiar about, like, you know, the copy method. We've seen it in, in dictionaries and we've, we've also seen it in lists. And her question was simple, right? Why can't we just, um, why can't we just use the, the, the equality operator and just uh, assign the list as opposed to, to copying it? as opposed to evoking the copy method on the list, right? Do you, do you want to tell us what, what the reason is, by the way? I'll leave it up to you, too. Um. <laughs> um, so the, if we have the original list, which is var11, and then we assign var12 as var11, it's var12 is, hmm. <laughs> um, it does, it, it's kind of bound to var11. Exactly. So, no, that's very it, by the way, it's bound there. so if you were to change var11, var12 would be changed too. So you need var copy so that you, if, so if you were to say var13 now is equal to var11.copy and then you were to change var11, <laughs> var13 would still be the original list, the orig original var11 list. Thank you, Alex. So that's, that's very important, and, 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 and in fact, this ties in quite strongly with, uh, you know, there's, there's this thing I've been talking about. I've, I've, been, I've been thinking about, um, about, um, about two, two code snippets that are in the, the Zilla book. Um, so if you look at, on, it just, if you, you should find time and look at this, right? Page 153 and 154, so there, there are these two uh, modules that you should look at, right? So they tie in quite, quite, quite strongly with, with what he just taught us here, right? Very important, right? And so before, before we start here, I just, I just wanted, wanted to see if we, we are all on the same page here, right? Uh, I, I, I didn't see him yesterday, right? I mean, sorry, on, on Thursday. Uh, do, do you want to tell us, do you want to tell us whether line number one, and he's going to, he's, do you want to tell us whether line number one is going to work here? Is this, it's, it's a dictionary, obviously, right? But, I'm not trying to put you on, on the spotlight here, but, but, but remember what we said about uh, immutable types and 
you know, mutable types. We, we said that, and this is very important, right? We said that um, keys can only be of what type? Immutable type, right? Because the lady was sitting in the first row, she's not here, the holiday, right? Um, I, I, I asked, well, I asked if we could, we could actually assign Boolean values, you know, I, I, we could actually use Boolean values as keys, right? And, and I jokingly said I don't know, but I knew. But I also said that, but I also said that um, we know that everything we've been dealing with, well, at, at least up to the point when you started looking at these advanced data structures, um, are actually types that are immutable, right? And so one works actually, right? Two. Um, I, I wanted to randomly pick people here. He sent us, thank you very much, uh, for question. He sent us uh, an implementation of uh, a, a random choice thing. This thing is not, I wanted to randomly pick people here. But, 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 but what's important here is that uh, a float is immutable, right? So this works. Now, number three is very important, right? Number three will not work because the key is a dictionary, right? And we know that dictionaries, Immutable, right? But four works um, because we know that we can actually have. So we can, we can. It's possible for us to have immutable immutable types as values, but then it's not possible for them to be, you know, uh, flipped the other way around. So we can't have them as. as so we can't have uh, mutable uh, mutable data types as keys, right? But we can have them as values, right? So that works. This is uh, so just uh, something to to keep in mind here, right? Uh, so sets and nested collections here. Yes, um, so I started looking at this. Right? I, I remember, you know, they, they taught us, they started teaching me, well, at least back where I come from, they, they started teaching us, like, sets uh, at a very early stage, right? We, we used to draw Venn diagrams. And at the time, I couldn't figure out what these Venn diagrams were all about and how they're actually going to fit into my future life goals. But now I know that uh, we found them, right? Any, anyone ever done like played around with Venn diagrams? You know, A intersection B, A union B, and all that. We've all done this, right? This is elementary mathematics, right? So, so, so the thing is, uh, you, you notice that. Um, so, so the two data structures that we've looked at so far, so lists and dictionaries, they are quite useful. But then there are certain instances, as is the case with the example I just, you know, uh, put up here, right? I mean, so. so if, if I were to ask, if I were to ask to say, how, how would we, someone is doing 2028 here, an advanced mathematics course, right? He says it's tough. But if, if I was to ask to say, how would, we, how would we figure out how many of us in here are actually doing that course, right? Uh, if, if we were to pull the database from, uh, the 2028 database from, from that Vula site and you know, put out all the names, and if, if we said we wanted to check how many, how many individuals in that particular, how many individuals in road for, the, for that particular course are also in road for this course? We could, we could easily do that with, we, well, we could do that with lists or dictionaries, right? But then it wouldn't be as, as easy as it would be by using sets, right? Um, a, a brute force way would be, or would involve us, you know, scrolling through each and every individual, like in the 2028 course, right? And then checking if, that particular individual also belongs to the uh, CSC 1017 course, right? To be time consuming, right? But we we'll, we'll, we'll discover when you start looking at sorting, by the way, and searching that we could, we could just as well easily reduce um, the time cost when we're searching for, for such things, right? But what we're saying is that um, for such cases, right, for such cases, sets become uh, useful, right? And we'll see that there's, there's a whole range of methods that we can use to actually uh, achieve uh, overall objectives associated to you know, combinations of two or more sets, right? right. So some, some rules, some basic rules associated with sets here. These are, these are very important. So uh, things to do, just another point, another important point, things to do with you know, the methods. Yes, they're important, but we're not trying to memorize methods, right? No one is going to ask you to say, uh, what does the pop item method, how many, how many uh, para formal parameters does the pop, pop uh, item method you know, take in? I mean, 
it, it wouldn't make sense, right? We're try trying to see if people understand these things. But the characteristics are very important, right? So f first thing here, your, your, your items, so the items that you find in a Pythonic set are unique, right? They'll always be unique. So you can never have uh, a set that has one, one, two, two, three, right? But you can have a set that has one, two, three. And we'll look at examples just now. Right? And the way that we go about defining them, again, there's, uh, there's a couple of ways of doing this. But in the event that we wanted to, uh, say, define an empty set, we would have to invoke the set method. And it's not a method, it's a constructor here. But we're, we're saying set, set function here because we don't want to introduce other phrases. It's not a function. But this is what we use, you know, uh, a set with, uh, uh, with no arguments, right? Lowercase set, right? The so the, the the set object, right? The set object is also optionally defined by curly brackets, but but there's a catch here. Um, when when you create so when you create um, so w when when you when you actually when you actually run this when you feed the, the Python interpreter with this. And, and check the type of this. The Python interpreter will actually tell you that it's a dictionary. Um, and so it doesn't, for, for, for empty sets, this doesn't work, right? We know that this, this is actually a dictionary. But if you feed it values, comma separated values, then it becomes a set, right? So for non empty sets, you can, you can use the curly braces or brackets, right? But for, if you want to create an empty set, you have to, to, to evoke this constructor here, the set constructor, right? The values, of course, as with all data structures that we've looked at so far, are separated by commas, right? Right? And this is another important point here. The values can only be of immutable uh, types, right? So we can have strings, integers, floats, right? But we can never have, uh, uh, Ian, can we have, uh, can can we slot in uh, a dictionary in a set? Sorry, uh, Ian, right? Um, a dictionary is is what? Uh, Stephen, Stephen, Kuzwa, do you want to tell us what a dictionary is? It is it of is it a mutable type or is it an immutable type? A mutable data type? It's mutable, right? Right. Um, and there she is, the Mac lady we were talking about. Um, so, so, so the thing is, we can't, we 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 cannot slot, we cannot slot uh, dictionaries in, in in sets, right? We we cannot slot, we cannot have sets within sets, we cannot have lists within sets, right? We didn't look at tuples, but we can have tuples in sets. We can have floats in sets, you know, strings in sets, right? Can we have functions in sets? I don't know, right? Uh, <clears throat> but sets are mutable, right? Very important as well. So we can change, we can, we can play around with sets. And, that's, and we we'll actually get to see that we also have the copy method in here because they're mutable, right? They change. And so we need, we need a way to actually preserve uh, what we initially have access to, right? So a, a couple of, uh, of examples with regards to what we're looking at, you know, how we go about creating sets. So you know, it's in line number one that uh, we mentioned that we can, we can use curly brackets or, or curly braces or braces uh, only when we are creating non-empty sets, right, as we are doing in line number one here, right? Notice that we are, we are separating our members or our values Sets of members, but we can call them values, right? We're separating our members with commas, right? So one, two, and three are members of our set var set, right? Var set, in other words, var set has three members or three values, right? Of type integer. It's it's an unsorted bag of values, right? We can. It doesn't necessarily mean that we. We must have uh, values of one data type. We can have a set that is composed of multiple data types. So we can, we can have, we can add, we can actually add, we can slot at the end of that set. We can choose to slot a string hello, and it will work, right? <coughs> right. Line number four is just an illustration of how we go about using our set function. 
right? And we'll notice that in both cases, when we actually evoke the, if, if when we evoke the, the type built-in function and try and, and, and ask the Python interpreter what data type this is, it will tell us to say it's, it's actually a set, right? I hope we are playing around with these things. These are quite helpful when you're, when you're trying to understand things here, right? Um, and you notice that if you want to, to just you know, verify what we just mentioned earlier, you can, you can, you can actually run type on, on an empty, on, on, on two empty braces, opening and closing braces, and you notice that um, the Python interpreter will actually tell us that it's a dictionary, right? Okay. So, uh, just uh, to, to stress the fact that uh, sets can only be composed of unique values, you notice that uh, what we have in line number one here is uh, we, we, are, we are telling the Python interpreter so we want to define a set that has one, two, three, one, three, right? Um, but if we, if, if, we, if we actually feed this to the Python interpreter, what it will return is one, two, three, right? It measures all the duplicate values, or it gets rid of the duplicate values, right? You can only have unique values in sets. There, there, there are a number of implications for doing this, right? We must think about um, potential use cases, right? For instance, if I wanted to, if, if I was creating a function or a program that uh, sort of like manipulated or modified um, last names of uh, good people in this class, it, it, it would be a really terrible idea for us to do that because we know that we have uh, people who have last names like Naidus who are, I think I counted two here, right? So. We'll, that set would, would actually tell us to say we only have one Naidu, when in actual fact we had you know, two Naidus, right? Implications of doing this. Uh, and I'm trying to stress the fact that uh, sets, sets can, can, only be, can only be composed of members that are immutable, right? L look at, do you think, uh, here's the thing, right? What is the result of, of line number one here? Look at. Chad, what's the result? <laughs> Sorry? No, we only have one Chad in here, come on. Is, is Chad not here? I can't see. <laughs> Chad, Chad doesn't know the answer. <laughs> Sorry? Richard, yes, please, thank you. Richard, what, what's, what's the result of... I, I, I like putting like trick, sort of like trick statements to try and see if we, if we understand what we, what we looked at before, before I came into the picture here, right? You can, yeah, you can run it anyway, it's fine. True, yeah. false? Right, 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 true, false. <laughs> no, but it is true, right? It is true. Um, so the, the reason I'm a bit skeptical here is that I'm, I'm not sure if, uh, you, you notice that we have true one, yeah, true one and false. I'm not sure if, if, if one is going to be merged into the true or the true is going to be merged into the one here. That's why I wasn't, I wasn't certain. But he, this is what Richard is telling us, right? He's telling us that what, what's happening here is, uh, this is what will happen, right? So it's actually one, right? So one is, true is merged into one. So the and that's the thing. Even though they are, it's an unordered bug, but what's, what's happening, look at this, right? What's, what's happening is, what's happening is the merging is, so the last item that you define is merged into the, is the one that is preserved, right? Oh, it's an unordered bug. That's a thing, right? Number two? It's a, it's a what? No, but it's not an exam. It's not, we're, we're not getting marks for giving the wrong answers. We must try these things, right? Is, is there anyone here? It's a, some, some of these names, look at some, an interesting example. Some of these names, I was, there's, there's, there's something we're going to play around with in the laboratory exercise, sorry, context switch here. In the laboratory exercise, and I was looking at, um, I don't know how many of us have figured out how UCT uh, computes, how UCT generates our student numbers, right? I was looking at some of the names and I was a bit confused. I was looking at uh, a person called Angel Lai and she has a LXX and 
you know, but, and, and so that's, that's how I was, where is she? That's the thing. I, is, is, is Angel the official name that you use? Surely it's not, right? I, yes, I knew it, because if you look at, <laughs> no, no, it's serious. If, if you look at, we'll look at the example, right? If you look at uh, her name, it doesn't conform to what I thought is actually the way UCT does it. We're not sure, but we can guess, right? Uh, with some degree of accuracy, actually, maybe 90% or something. Uh, Angel, line number two, do you, do you suppose, uh, what, 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 what's the result of this? Uh, it would be an error, right? Because, because a set, a set ca cannot have uh, as values uh, types that are mutable. It's a list, right? Uh, we're telling the Python interpreter to say, we want to create var set two, you know, which is a set that is composed of one member or one value, which is a, a list. A list is mutable, right? You tell us it's not possible, right? Uh, line number three is more or less related to line number two, with the with the difference that we are we actually uh, this is the thing we have a dictionary uh, nested within the set. Not possible, right? <coughs> ah, that's the thing. So sets are mutable, right? Sets are mutable. Um, sets are mutable, meaning that we can change them. We can remove uh, items from there, right? We can add items. We can purge the set if we want to. Uh, we can do all sorts of uh, funny things with the set, right? Because it's mutable, right? It's changeable, we can change it, right? And so here's, here's uh, a few examples. We, we're just uh, looking at some, some of the, some three really interesting methods within, within the set class, right? Uh, that might prove to be useful in the laboratory exercise where we're looking, where we're probably going to look at here. So notice that in line number three, what we're doing is we're, we're essentially evoking the, the add method, right? Which takes in just a single parameter, we'll see this, right? Um, and w when we actually run this, this statement, what will happen is we'll, we'll, we'll actually, uh, what, what, what the Python interpreter will do is it will return um, a set, um, uh, which is shown here, right? It returns a set. It returns a set. Return, it takes in a single parameter, returns a set. I'm not saying we should memorize what add does, but I'm saying we should, we should, be, we should be able to, to understand what is happening, right? Right, when we have a method, you know, it takes in parameters, what does it return, right? We can, we can remove an item, right? Remove probably, you know, I mean, for what intents and purposes here, remove probably does, I mean, does not return anything. It returns, implicitly it returns none, right? Because it really wouldn't make sense for us to return what we've removed, right? We're trying to remove it from there. Interestingly enough, you, when you poke around the set method, you realize that there's, there's another interesting method called, uh, I think it's, is it, what, what, what is it? Discard or something. Discard and remove pretty much do the same thing with the exception that if you try and remove an item, if you try and evoke the remove method on a set uh, for, for an item that does not uh, exist within that set, the Python interpreter will spit out an error, but when you evoke discard, it will not, you know, uh, it, it will not tell you that it's an error, right? Um, and so depending on how your implementation is like, you might opt to choose one over the other here, right? Clear just pages. We have the clear method in the dictionary as well, right? Dictionary class. Is, is this making sense? Good. No questions then. So something else we, we, we want to emphasize here is the fact that, uh, and this slide, it's, it's always there for a reason, right? It's there in lists, dictionaries, it's, th it's, it's here now, right? I was, I was telling someone that, uh, in one of the laboratory sessions, I was telling someone that the reason why I'm able to chain, to chain my, my methods, right? The reason why I'm able to, to say hello, the reason why I'm able to say hello dot title, right? And then dot upper, right? Right? And then dot lower, right? The, the reason I'm chaining these methods is because I understand that because I understand that this portion of the code returns a string. If it returns a string, I can evoke any string method, and that's the reason why I'm evoking uh, upper, 
this portion returns a string. That's why I'm evoking lower. And, 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 and we, can, we, can, we can also, we know that we can do this as well, right? What we are saying is that we are trying, and in fact, we can, can we, what else can we do here? <laughs> can we pop, where is, is pop an item in here? Where is it? It's in dictionary, right? We have pop in here. The reason I can, I can chain methods and do and play around with these things is because I understand what is happening. I understand that uh, certain portions of my statements return specific values, and I know the methods that are a part of the class to which that particular instance is a part of, right? Right, something to remind ourselves. There's a fundamental difference between what's happening in line number six, line number seven, and line number nine, right? So, uh, so the thing is, there's plenty of methods in the set, in the set, uh, in the set class, right? Uh, and, and I figured, uh, I figured it would, it would actually be, it would make sense if we, it would probably, probably take us two hours for us to look at everything. But seeing as we understand what the methods do, right? Seeing as we understand the implications of having required parameters and default parameters, it would be very easy for us to understand uh, the other methods that we're not. Uh, going to look at here. It's, it's going to be an exercise. We're going to have to look at uh, those methods here. But uh, I just want to point out two, two important things with regards to the, set, to the set class, right? The fact that you will find methods such as intersection, right? Intersection and methods such as intersection underscore or underbar update, right? They, they do, they pretty much, they, they pretty much well, they perform the same action, but they perform that action in a sort of like different way, right? So start with intersection. What intersection does, we know that when we have two sets A and B, the Venn diagrams, right? Uh, I'll use blue, to, I, I miss the Venn diagrams. Uh, the, we know that, uh, just as an example, we're not trying to teach ourselves what uh, the intersection of A and B is here. We already know what this is. But what, what we're saying is that what, what the method intersection does is it takes in, it takes in a set, right? And of course you evoke it on an instance, on an instance of a set, right? So a set object, right? Are, are you Bongani? Are you, what's your name? Yes, you. Oh, Yolanda, oh, I thought you were Bongani. I, so are we following what's, what's happening here? I just put on my glasses because I can't see. So what we're saying is, what we're saying is that what we're doing here is something very basic here, but what I'm saying is, if we, what the intersection method does is it takes, uh, it, it evokes, we are evoking, we are evoking the method on A. Let's, we are evoking the method on A intersection, and then we feed it B, right? But what's happening is that what, what this will do is it will return a set. It will return a set, and and there's there's an, there's, there's there's a whole you know series we'll line number one up to six here showing what's exactly happening, but but if you look at intersection underscore update, what what it does is it does something slightly different, right? The operation is the same. We're interested in 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 what's what's common between A and B, with the exception that the result is merged into A, right? In the first case we are returning a completely new set, right? But in the second case, what we're doing is we're modifying, we're modifying the first set. Is this making sense? And you find a number of like uh, methods that have corresponding underbar update methods, underbar update methods. The reasoning or the rationale is pretty much the same, right? Uh, is this making sense? <laughs> Uh, so, uh, as, as an exercise, uh, go to your Python interpreter and uh, hit help set, um, and please poke around and play around with all these funny and interesting methods here, right? There'll be an exercise tomorrow on this, I think. <clears throat> we're, we're jumping into a, a, a multi-dimensional thing is here, right? You, you, you notice that um, 
So I deliberately decided not to, we, de we de did it, there was a consensus here. We, we deliberately decided not to, not to look at uh, uh, so multi-dimensional sequences or multi-dimensional lists and, 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 and also nested, nested collections because we figured it would make sense if we actually looked at them towards the end once we covered uh, dictionary sets and, and lists, right, comprehensively. Um, so what happens with, with lists here is that there are certain, so there are certain instances where, or there are certain specific use cases that might require you to actually make use of uh, lists nested within lists, right? Or lists nested within lists that are subsequently nested within other lists, right? We're going three dimension here, right? A classic example here is our, our sitting arrangement here, right? I was thinking of a nice way to introduce this, and I, I remember to say the way that you know, our, our sitting structure is arranged here is like pretty much a list, right? Uh, I think this is like if, if this whole thing was, if we were to view this as a giant list, we'd say it has item number one, two, three, index zero, one, this is the list, right? Zero, one, two, right? But we know that um, the item that's at index number zero is actually a list in, in its own right, right? It has rows, right? And within those rows, you have individual sitting columns, right? So it's actually a three-dimensional list because if I wanted to, to choose him, I would say I want a list at index zero, one, right? Uh, row number one, two, three, four, five, six, right? Item number one, two, three, right? So I'd have list zero, eight, three. Is it two? I don't know, right? So there are certain use cases where it becomes you know, really important for us to, to, to think about potential solutions in the form of nested lists, right? Or multi-dimensional lists, as it were. Accessing, accessing those items is pretty much straightforward, right? You, you just need to visualize, you just need to visualize your multi-dimensional list in the form of uh, a matrix of some sort, right? So a two-dimensional list is, is pretty straightforward because you know that you have rows here, right? Row zero, one, two, or row one, two, three, but index zero, one, two, Right? Uh, these are specific columns that you have. Right? Um, look at what we're doing in, in line number one here. We're saying our nested list, which is visualized above here, is composed of one, two, three list items. Right? One, two, three list items. But the list items are themselves lists, right? that are composed of items, right? How would we, how would we, and this is the thing, what, what, what's, what's the result of, of van nest one here? And, and Ms. Jana knows what we're talking about here, right? Uh, could you? Exactly, right, so we'd return a list, right? What, what's, what's the result of uh, Vanus uh, 1 minus 1? So, yeah. Oh, come on. Ian knows, sorry? Yeah. Ian knows that it returns, it returns the last item, right? It's the last item, right? So anyway, take our point here is that we, we know that uh, these, well, we know that these, these uh, collection structures or these compound data types can take in, well, can take in any sort of values that conform to the rules associated to those particular data structures. Like for lists, we know that we can have lists within lists. And so if we can have lists within lists, we can literally treat those individual lists that are contained within our lists as data types, right? with specific positions associated to, to them in form of indexes, 0, 1, 2, 3, up to left minus 1, 1, 2. Uh, can I ask a question? How, how, how far deep do you, go, do you think we can go down uh, nesting? I was asking people in the laboratory session how, like, uh, how many items they think or they thought, and uh, like how many items, the maximum number of list uh, items we can have in the list, and nobody wanted to, 
give us an answer. I don't know if people have finally figured it out. But how many, in terms of nesting, Alex, how many, how many levels can we go? I don't know. I hope we, we think about some of these questions as we are going through these things, right? We should. Uh, and just to emphasize the fact that uh, the nesting is not necessarily restricted to the nesting is not necessarily restricted to to this salon. Remember, we looked at uh, something else, another data structure, and that's a dictionary. And what I what I did, and this is one of the one of the problems we're going to work on tomorrow. What I did was I, I was thinking of how, like, different sort of configurations we could use to to play around with our VULA database, our CS, uh, C1017F database, right? And I came up with this, right? Say, say why can't we have um, a dictionary, right? And slot in dictionaries that are composed of uh, the different categories that we have, students, uh, support staff, lecturers, uh, observers, right? The observer is my favorite character in Fringe. Observers uh, and, and all the other supporting roles, right? And then why can't we also then, inside, inside those different categories, right, inside here, why can't we slot in dictionaries as well, corresponding to individual records, right? So we have uh, uh, Tandolwetu's name here, record number 53 as being an example here. So this is nested, right, within this. In fact, we can even go deeper, right? Why can't we split this into, why can't we split this because it's first name, last name, last name, first name. Why can't we split it into another dictionary, right? And assign this first component into to, to a last name, right? Uh, and this to a first name. We can we can go down here, you know. <laughs> I, I think this is really interesting, right? By the way, this like when I was coming up with this, I was in my mind I was thinking like most of the. Uh, so uh, data manipulation that I tend to do is in spreadsheets, and I was, I was thinking about spreadsheets, right? You know that your spreadsheet has rows and columns and all that, so, you know. This will be fun, I, I assure you, tomorrow. Right. Um, so uh, I figured I'd, I'd, I'd talk a little bit more about, uh, the, you know, the dif different ways in which we can actually nest our, our, our CS1017F database, right? We have uh, a list within a list, which we already uh, are aware about here. We have uh, a dictionary within a list, right? We're nesting here, right? Uh, we have, uh, oh, this is the same as that, is it? But we, we have uh, dictionaries within dictionaries, right? We have dictionaries within dictionaries, but which also have dictionary di dictionaries nested within them, right? But what you will notice is that what you'll notice is that what we don't have here is a configuration where we have a list being, uh, well, a list, I mean, sets nested within sets, or dictionaries nested within uh, sets. Because we know, we understand now that sets can only be composed of what? Immutable data types. Uh, so I, I just wanted to kind of uh, wrap up by reminding us that uh, this is going to be uh, one, one of the things we're going to look at tomorrow. Um, and, and just to, to, to point out the fact that when we, we actually test, we're going through the black box, uh, black box testing process of our implementation. And this is the second or last question. Uh, bear in mind that there are certain interesting cases like Angel's case where it doesn't, it won't necessarily conform to what we're expecting because, you know, if you look at the, the last portion of our first name, CHI, oh, sorry, uh, HSI, it doesn't really necessarily correspond to angel, right? Right? Uh, but like, they're stemming out, they, by the way, they're stemming out, they're stemming out vowels. So they're playing around with consonants here. So this is what we're going to look at as well, right? All right. Okay. Uh, I guess this is a. Uh, I thought it would take longer. This is it then. Uh, do, do you guys have any questions so far? Concerns? I had fun. 
Thank you very much, Phil. All good luck. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> No, no, really, I, I did. I had, I had a lot of fun, and uh, I, I just wanted to, to point out that you're you going to have even more fun with Dr. Derenzi here. You're going to look at cool things now. This is, it's happening now. You're going to start looking at sorting and, and, and searching, and foul, foul, foul input output is, is, is something I really spent a lot of time doing. I was processing a lot of XML files some time back. I was working with a huge database, 286 gigabytes, and I had, I had fun playing around with, you know, you enjoy it, I assure you, and good luck.